there had been a long period when there was little success in addressing climate change. The UN Framework Convention on Climate Change, 1992, uh, entered into force a year later. Great aspirations, but no requirements. Kyoto Protocol, very mixed results. Only uh, 30, whatever it was, seven developed countries really had any goals or requirements. Developing countries didn't have to do anything. And the uh, goal of uh, emissions reduction was modest. That meant we had to figure out why that was the case. And I had just published an article with another graduate student, Mihaila Papa, uh, in 2012, on um, uh, basically assessing why it had been unsuccessful uh, addressing climate change, and concluded that it's because it was treated as a pollution problem. So you had to have targets and timetables for reducing the pollution, when in fact the underlying cause was unsustainable development. We were fueling our, literally fueling our whole development process unsustainably. And that led to the start of this course. And um, my uh, colleague, Patrick Verkoyan, um, and I were discussing this and he said, you ought to do a course on this. And uh, I'll, I'll, bring in, I'll bring in people who are doing bits and pieces of this. And uh, so we developed this course where we actually had every year three or four uh, people who were engaged in some dimension of what might be called sustainable development support diplomacy, just to kind of have a reality check on whether this was going to be just an academic exercise or it might actually be practical. And we worked through the entire comparison between the um, Kyoto Protocol and the Paris Agreement on Climate and found that it followed all of the seven diagnostics that we had uncovered through the, through the five years of coursework. 20, 125 research papers by students, each on a different topic, and so that seemed like the natural thing to do was to write an article about it. And my two graduate students, uh, Rishi Bandari and Laura Kuhl, were both took the course and then became teaching assistants in it, and uh, they were instrumental in getting the paper written. The idea was to take a look at what it is that would actually allow us to achieve some of the sustainable development goals. Just to give you some examples, the first, the first one is, is the most important. Is this really a problem uh, related to sustainable development? If it is, it fits into the category. And then we had to find a way to deal with it. That's what we were concerned with. How do you deal with this problem? Why is it intractable? Well, once it's correctly defined, you know it's a sustainable development problem, then you start looking at how it can be put together. Developing a mutual gains appro uh, approach, meaning that there is um, something in the interest of all the parties in the agreement. Uh, secondly, you consult all the parties. You don't just go off and write this and then inflict it on others. You actually have them be part of the process of putting it together. Um, another another uh, diagnostic was uh, uh, to uh, make sure that not only did you have that input from all the parties, but you also had technical expertise. That what you were doing actually was compatible with the science of the problem, with the economics of the problem, uh, with the um, uh, analysis of the political and social dimensions of the problem. And uh, <clears throat> then it was very helpful to have somebody in a good leadership position who could, could make it uh, come through. And uh, it had to be, um, uh, the solution should be, the complexity of the solution should be compatible with the complexity of the problem. Don't make the solution so complicated that it won't work, but don't make it so simplistic that it's not good enough. In order to implement sustainable development, one has to address the problem where it's occurring. And in fact, it was Eleanor Ostrom, who was the only woman to win the Nobel Memorial Prize in economics. And as everyone said, of course, that would go to a woman who was not an economist, which is a bit ironic, I suppose. But she had this great insight uh, that uh, uh, it makes a big difference uh, where one uh, takes the action. And she looked at it as top and bottom. And 
we examined that a bit and decided, actually, it's a little more subtle than that. Um, there are things that are best done from the top, meaning perhaps at the international level or the national government, uh, setting common rules that everybody can agree to. And um, on the other hand, there are other things that are much better done from the bottom up at the grassroots level. That is, individuals getting together, civil society, working. But there are many levels in between, politically, economically. There are, uh, in many countries, there are uh, subnational governments, states or provinces. Uh, there are, of course, cities and city governments. Uh, in uh, many parts of Western Europe and the United States, there are uh, neighborhood associations, which are not officially governments, but they are groups of citizens who get together and work on various projects to improve things in their local, very local area. So getting the, the implementation at the right political level, at the right scale, is another essential component of the Diagnostics for Sustainable Development Diplomacy to succeed. And finally, it had to be a, a living document that allowed uh, modifications as conditions changed, as knowledge changed, as the very actions that you took to address the problem changed the nature of the problem. So that flexibility was important. And we put all those together in, uh, in, 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 a, in a frame and, uh, and uh, said, there's the picture, sustainable development diplomacy.